How's it going guys? Today we're uh, looking at the Ridley, Ridley X-Trail 105. Um, I'm going to go over some of the modifications I made with it. Um, interestingly enough, there's not a whole lot of information in terms of video review on this bike and how awesome I uh, perceive it to be. Um, let's see. So going forward, I got this bike because I was missing a bike that, um, uh, I happened to have in high school. I bought a road bike, my first road bike. I happened to pay half a pack of cigarettes for the road bike. There was a guy that I knew that no longer wanted it. And as soon as I rode it, I fell in love with it and had to have it. Um, it was so efficient, um, it, you know, moving, um, that, that, that I absolutely had to have it. The gearing on the bike, uh, felt like a Porsche. All my energy seemed to propel, propel me forward at rocket speed. And I just loved how efficient the bike was. Um, growing up, I never gave much thought to, um, you know, a road bike per se. Um, you know, you grow up and you see a lot of kids on mountain bikes and BMXs. And, you know, it's not like we're going to the skate park every day that we would need a BMX and it's not like we're, um, you know, you know, driving down mountain passes and stuff like that and trails. So it makes sense to have a road bike. And I lost that road bike. I honestly don't remember what happened to it, but it was an older steel frame mountain bike, probably from the, you know, seventies or eighties or something. And I absolutely loved it. So enter this bike. I, uh, you know, I was missing the, having uh, a bicycle and not only that, but a road bike. And these last couple of years, I've been riding uh, dual sport motorcycles. Um, and I like my dual sports to be able to mix it up and do 50% on road and 50%, you know, off road, you know, and light trails and that kind of stuff. Nothing too gnarly, but so that's that's how I came into wanting to buy this bike um, and there was a lot of options on the market I went into the forums for weeks I studied and tried to get a grip on um, you know w w what would be the best value and what would my my parameters for the bike be and trying to find out you know uh, basically that kind of stuff you know so right now the bike's loaded all up. It's got its panniers and its bags and its water bottles and stuff. And I kind of just wanted to go over uh, just a brief overview, if you will. Um, not try and get into too much detail. A little bit about me um, as a rider. I'm not a, um, you know, uh, you know, Lance Armstrong. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not, you know, the most knowledgeable on, uh, you know, uh, gravel bikes. And so going back to me riding dual sport motorcycles, I wanted something that could mix it up 50 50 um, and, and be able to do both, you know, uh, moderately well and be able to, you know, achieve the tasks that I set forth for it. And uh, so that those were my parameters. And it was interestingly enough, you know, when I started looking for a road bike to replace um uh, the, the road bike that I used to have, I, I discovered that there was the new category of gravel bike. And so I was really interested in that and that sounded really attractive to me. Um, so that, that's kind of how I got into this. This is this, that, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so I'm not the most knowledgeable. I don't have, there are a lot of guys that have $3,000 bikes and $5,000 bikes and really expensive bikes and multiple bikes and multiple setups. I, I don't have that kind of allowances, so to speak. And so this is, this is kind of uh, what I'm working with. I wanted, you know, to get one bike that would be able to do it all. And this is where I kind of landed on it. Kind of what I wanted to do was be able to do commuting, um, 
uh, touring and I wanted to be able to go on off-road trails. And this bike that stands before you uh, has actually done mountain bike trails. I've done plenty of my mountain bike trails on it that were pretty gnarly. And um, so as soon as I got the bike, I, I wanted to start testing out what its capabilities were, okay? And the reason I settled on this bike over a lot of the much loved and um, suggested when I went into the bike forums, guys suggested me getting a Kona or a, 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 a Surly and, um, uh, you know, uh, salsas and stuff like that. The reason I settled on this bike was the price tag. Um, I, I knew that I wanted hydraulic disc brakes. And so for a lot of guys that, um, that want that, this came in at 1600, uh, roundabout give or take. And no one else was really offering hydraulic disc brakes at that price point that I could easily find. Since then, uh, I've been in the forums and a lot of guys have been able to post bikes that are near that price range. Um, but none with the radical yellow uh, paint job. And this paint, it's kind of hard to tell, but this paint's actually got a lot of grease smears on it. That's not what I was going to say, but it's actually a matte yellow um, instead of a, 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 a gloss yellow, which is interesting. It takes grease smudges like crazy, but I love how the flat actually, it, it almost makes it stand out more. It makes it pop. Um, so back to the disc brakes. Um, there are Shimano 105 disc brakes. Um, and I've had no issues with them whatsoever. And, and there are benefits, advantages to having disc brakes, and then there's disadvantages. Like, for example, you know, if you get into an accident and bend it, you know, so I'll acknowledge that from the get-go for potential viewers, you know, juggling the question of what to get. Um, disc brakes offer really nice modulation. Um, I have had guys make comments, like, to the to to the equivalency of you don't need um hydraulic disc brakes mechanical disc brakes will just do, do just fine you know and basically them saying to the extent i've you know they were basically saying i've never seen a bicycle you know get you know cherry red rotors going downhill that had mechanical disc brakes well you know i acknowledge this um but i wanted the hydraulics because it makes modulation and it makes uh, controlling speed factors going down hills uh, a little bit more precise and I like that it's you can dial in and fine-tune your needs um, a lot easier than 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 someone uh, that, that doesn't have hydraulic disc brakes and that's why I like it uh, v-brakes have that advantage of if something gets bent or broken you can disconnect the line and if your wheel is bent or you know something to that nature it's a little bit easier so but but without further ado, the reason I got hydraulics was the previously mentioned reasons. I wanted something that modulated well. And, you know, if you think about it, if you aren't wasting energy, okay, that's propelling you forward. So, in other words, you're going downhill, you have to brake. You, you have better control of that. So, you aren't wasting that energy. And then that's not speed that you're then going to have to pick up by uh, pedaling. So I, I, I like that idea of it. Um, I, 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 so I, I, I absolutely love its hydraulic disc brakes. Um, and, uh, I also, it's an alloy frame with a carbon fiber, uh, front fork. So the, um, alloy frame, uh, when I first got into, uh, the forums trying to find what kind of bike would be my ultimate dream bike, a lot of guys that I, I had made the mistake of, uh, uh, joining, uh, steel frame forums and to them, uh, you know, they were, they were, um, a steel frame only closed group, you know, type of thing. And, um, very quickly, I found out that I didn't necessarily need or want a steel frame. I, I understand the advantages. There's more um, strength than a steel frame, and, you know, they're almost indestructible. Um, but And they have excellent riding characteristics, so some people say with steel elasticity and how it uh, flexes during riding, and it has this springy feel that seems to agree with the rider's uh, pedaling cadence, and it makes you feel more responsive, and 
and that's all well and good. I like that. I, I, I like all that. And I might get, get a still frame eventually, one day. But for now, this is it. And the reason I chose this alloy frame was because this alloy frame was uh, specced to a to a degree that it was built to do bike packing. And if you don't know what bike packing is, it means that, you know, you're, you're, you're traveling and on, uh, you know, unpaved roads, possibly, and you're sightseeing. And so, um, there are differences between commuting, bike packing, and touring. Okay. I'm not going to get into them in this video, but Okay, so bike packing is where you're um, basically on off-road trails, and it could be rough terrain, and you're going to need a strong frame, and it needs to be able to hold weight. And so because this can do it, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's a very strong frame, and it's built to do it. I, I, I figured that this was a good enough deal. I, um, once again, don't want to really get into too much of the 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 speculation uh about you know saving a few pounds and going with a, a an alloy frame versus a carbon versus steel they all have strengths benefits and merits and ultimately it's up to the end user what they want okay for their specification for me i have i have found that this is more than adequate it's a fantastic bike as a whole um and with that said i'm gonna lead you into some of the things that I've done with this bike since I got it, okay, and it's been like I said, I'm not, I'm not the Rockefellers, I'm not Bill Gates, I'm not Elon Musk. I don't have a ton of money, and so I wanted to do uh, uh, small upgrades or um, uh, modifications that would benefit it greatly long term. And so the first thing that I did was I changed out those tires, okay. So these are these are not factory tires. They they do not come stock on the bike. Um, these are the Mich Michelin Pro Tech Cross, and they're rated for e-bike tires. And basically, what I wanted to do was I wanted a tread pattern that was aggressive for off-roading. Okay, and. When I started taking this off-road, the first day I went down a really gnarly mountain bike trail. Not not gravel, not gravel, a mountain bike trail, okay? Because that's what I wanted to do with the bike. And immediately, the stock factory tires, which are the kind that you can fold up and put in a jersey pocket, okay? They they had gotten just the, a nasty gash in the side. And I was able to mend them, but it was obvious that for future things... Okay, future events where I'd be doing such a task. Okay, it was it was you know imminent that I get something that can handle the abuse. Okay, and a lot of guys recommended going with a tire. Okay, that would have uh, a wider a wider tr uh, tread. Okay, or a wider uh, diameter. Okay, in terms of width, and so. A lot of guys were saying that they would go to, you know, 650B and, you know, uh, you know, 44Cs and stuff like that. And I, what I wanted to do, okay, was do my, do my modifications in increments, okay? Only, only what I needed. I don't want, you know, necessarily more weight on the bike. I don't necessarily want more rolling resistance, but I do want traction, okay? So there's a lot of variables that affect these, a lot of factors to come into play. So what I did was I went with the uh, Michelin uh, Protect Crosses, and the reason I did so was these were in a 35C, okay? So I wanted to go from the stock factory 32Cs to something with an aggressive tread pattern, okay, which these have, and I wanted to go with something that... Um, that was a little bit wider and these tires have been pre performing phenomenally phenomenally um they handle off-roading uh fantastically well they've given me an edge in terms of going on mountain bike trails and stuff like that and also they had five star reviews and the people that had them spoke just greatly about them saying that they rode over a glass and stuff like that. Now, I'm here to tell you after riding with them that all of those claims are indefinitely just absolutely true, okay? Because I've driven these on the side of the road where there's nothing but metal fragments and glass and 
you know, sharp rocks and just all kinds of debris. And these tires um, have no qualms about riding over that uh, type of nasty terrain. Um, and like I said, I've taken it on mountain bike trails. It, they've performed fantastically. They give me just the right uh, grip. And and so I, I have no qualms. Um, they, they seem like that they're holding up really well. And so th that's the only thing that I've really um, changed drastically about this bike. I will say this. It took me a while to get the PSIs uh, that, that I wanted figured out. So th these have a factory rated minimum and maximum PSI of the minimum is 35, the maximum is 85, okay? So I'm riding in about, for a long time I was riding at 65 PSI, which is for me and my weight and the weight of the bike, it's, it's very, very, um, uh, very, very pressurized. It's, it's too much. Okay. And it took me a while to figure that out. I had watched my wear patterns on the wheel to see what my engagement surface was. And it was just very thin right here. And what that was telling me was, is I had too much pressure in the tires and you could feel every bump going along the ride. However, the rolling resistance was low. So it was, it was making the bike more, um, a little bit more easier to get up to speed and faster, but what I wanted to do was uh, try and find that happy spot between traction and a plush ride and that of um, being able to have lower rolling resistance and be able to, you know, um, uh, get the bike down the road. And so I find with 60 PSI, I got just enough cushion while I'm riding these tires that it's, it's a comfortable ride, but it's also uh, enough to... Um, you know, give me a low rolling resistance to where I feel like I can maintain good speeds. However, what I will say is if, when I go take this off-roading, okay, I'm not talking about necessarily a gravel trail, but it could apply to that concept. It could apply to that scenario. But when I do mountain bike trails, I will lower the PSI probably by five, you know, or, or 10. Um, and then, so that that covers our tires. Let's let's look at other other aspects of this bike. The first thing I wanted to do on this bike, okay, from factory, was install these um, fenders, okay? And the reason that I did that, okay, was is the, the, the going through puddles, yeah, it's kind of annoying if you get water on you, but you're on a bike. It's not an enclosed environment, so that's, you know, kind of to be expected, right? You're going to get wet. Okay, you, you aren't in an uh, automobile or something like that that's, um, you know, completely encapsulated. You're, and that's the whole point, right, of a bike is that you're more free, that you that you can connect with your environment. However, the reason I added these um, these fenders, okay, and these guards is the fact that when you're driving through gravel and dirt, okay, you have dirt spraying up and that gets on your drivetrain, okay? and your drivetrain collects dirt. I've noticed a significant decrease in the amount of dirt that gets on my drivetrain by just having these uh, these fenders, these mud guards, okay? And there's a lot of guys that don't ride with them, and I'm sure they have the reasons for not riding with them, but ultimately, um, the ones that I got were off Amazon. I wanna say they costed 50 bucks, and I, I forget who makes them. I'll try and annotate that if I find out. However, what I will say is um, it's not as big of a pain as some people make it out to be to install fenders correctly. Um, you have to adjust here and there so you don't have wheel rub. And you also want to allow space, okay? A small space to where if mud does collect, it can run out of the system, okay? So you have to uh, accommodate for that. However, um, what I will say is, is they aren't as finicky or is uh um they they aren't as uh delicate as one would think they're actually really uh rugged and sturdy and they just you you mount them it takes a little while it takes maybe 45 minutes to install them but you're you're all set up at that point um so i like that um we'll go on with um the water bottle mounts just because that happens to be what i looked at next um i went with dirt cheap like five dollar mounts from um 
uh, what was it? I bought them from Walmart for five bucks. Okay. And I've actually broken one, replaced one. And so we're, we're back where we started. I modified them a little bit. So there used to be a, a, a ridge that went inward like this to provide tension on the bottle. But because I'm using these big old now jeans, okay. And I like the now jeans because they're very durable. I've dropped them and, uh, they've came off while riding a couple of times and they're sturdy. That's why I chose the bottles. They're sturdy. So, but these bottle mounts are five dollars at uh, at Walmart, and the reason I modified them and, and made the, the the cut, okay, where the detent holds and adds pressure, is because these are a lot wider bottles, okay, and it expands these jaws a little more to where, um, you know, they're they're kind of maxed out, okay. So because of that. Okay, it has all the tension it needs due to its size and the flex of the plastic. And I haven't had any other issues with that. I have a smaller Nalgene. I want to say that's like a 32 ounce, yeah, uh, Nalgene at the bottom and like a 48, I uh, believe, up top. And that provides me with more, more than adequate water supply um, when I'm commuting or, or doing whatever I have to do. Um, let's see. Uh, so the bike pump, once again, another Walmart purchase, maybe $10. Um, it's a Schwinn pump. I haven't felt the need to upgrade it. It's riding a little bit close to some of my derailer stuff, but it, it will not contact. Um, a couple modifications that I made to this were, um, I took Velcro straps and I just strapped this, um, the end of the fitting there. That way it doesn't bang up against, you know, my, um, my frame as I drive. I did it up top as well because there's no support system there. The support system's there and it's held on by this rubber o-ring material, this little plas uh, plastic band that goes across. So you can see where this would rattle up top. So I want to strap it down in case my leg brushes up against it. Another modification I did was I took Gorilla Tape and I, I wrapped it around the pump so that when it rides across the frame, it'll leave this nasty black mark. Um, that'll come off when I scrub the bike down, okay, which you know, I have my own routine, uh, you know, service cycle that I go through where I clean the bike every so often. Okay. And it comes off, the, 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 the marks come off, but it protects the pump and it protects the frame to some degree. Um, and then let's see. So I added this, uh, this is another Walmart purchase, nothing elaborate. It maybe costed 10 bucks. And that's where I keep all my, my wallets, my, my bike tools and stuff like that. Stuff that I might have to excess. I keep, um, uh, uh, a coagulant powder, a blood stopper powder in the back in case of emergency, if I get a laceration or a cut, uh, and you know, and I want to stop bleeding. It's pretty simple and it's, it's a simple, um, fix um it's a good medical thing to have you either you want to have some kind of medical kit on and a lot of guys don't ride with that i and i can understand that to a degree but i like having at least blood stoppers on me um and try and have some level of preparedness um at the front in the cockpit i have this one another walmart purchase it wasn't very expensive um and I can put my phone up top. And generally, I actually provide shielding from the sun. I put it in there. I've got my gloves in there. I've got a wallet in there, a minimalist wallet. Just simple uh, two O-rings and a piece of plastic. And it holds your money, holds your ID. We've got batteries in case we need to uh, charge um, devices and phones. And uh, that brings us to the headlight. It'll allow us to charge the headlight up front. Okay. And this is a, a cheap uh, Walmart by Bell biking computer. Honestly, I don't like it. Um, it's been having issues, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see me rip that off the bike pretty soon here and go for a better one. And I don't necessarily need a biking computer. It's just one of those things. We're guys. We like to see gauges and, you know, know things and stuff like that. You can kind of see that the... Uh, the all the brake lines and stuff go into the frame kind of hide them away you can see them they're they're partially hidden i mean they're exposed at the front obviously um and then that brings us to the back of the bike i guess so i installed this uh rack that way i can carry up to it says it's specked out for like 44 pounds or 45 pounds or something like that and 
um, I bought the it, both of these items off of Amazon, okay? And I was worried at first that somehow that the rack, because it's mounting through this eyelet, okay? I was worried that somehow that that, that rack would interfere with the mounting of this um, rear fender, but it actually didn't. It actually came with the right um, spacer for the eyelet right there, and that allowed me to run my fender here and then that spacer and the, this long bolt and everything just kind of came together perfectly. I was really happy, really happy that I didn't have to go to the hardware store and try and find, you know, the right thread, you know, pitch and depth and thread count and all that stuff. Here we have, you know, my, my reflective vest. I'm very big on high visibility and being seen in low light conditions, okay? And that brings me to a, 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 a actually kind of a tertiary point of the tires. These tires are reflective. Okay, they light up like a Christmas tree. I mean, they are the they are the most visible things you've ever seen. I'll annotate some pictures of me taking pictures at night. Um, recently, I took a picture of the bicycle with its headlight on, rear light on, and I used camera flash to simulate a car, what it would look like, and I did with no lights on and no 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 flash photography okay to simulate a car and showed how visible this bike is versus when i take a photo with flash photography and the tires light up and then on top of it i did one word it was just the headlights and so the i posted it in the bike forms and they could very clearly see what you look like to other drivers when you're um driving along okay um, this bike bag on back, I'll go back to this. It, it's supposed to hold like, I want to say it's 40 liters of stuff, maybe more 50 liters, something like that of gear. I kind of have this top bag just sandwiching my bike helmet on. Um, it, and it, it can easily come off with four snaps. I, I like that aspect of it. And there's a little carry handle to where if you have to grab your, your, sorry about the cameraman workmanship. I'm kind of doing this by myself. Um, but it's got this little carry handle, and you can lift the bike's rear wheel off this. Uh, it's got snaps that hook on to the, the actual frame, one up front right here. Um, and then it's got some that just wrap around back here. And it and there's a bar. You can see the bar right there. That's what it wraps around, okay? So I understand that the whole bike packing, um, you know, uh, bags that, that go and they basically mount under the, the seat, that's gained popularity for the aerodynamic principles of it, okay? And I've seen a lot of guys' bikes, what they consider to be um, loaded to bear, so to speak, or loaded down. And some guys just literally have, you know, a, a frame bag on and a little tiny, you know, under under the seat bag. And I understand that. That's, that's for a more aerodynamic approach, and that's well and good. Um, but this is kind of how I roll. I, I, and whether I'm riding dual sport or this, I kind of always have stuff, you know, I'm like, for example, right now I'm not going on any kind of trip, but I have spare clothes in here that, that I always keep. Look at this. So I have my, my, my Leatherman on me. It's a Leatherman juice CS4. I have that for uh, an extra tool to bring along. I have my uh, Streamlight ProTac, and this is a custom Kydex sheath that I built for it using thermoform molding techniques. Uh, I, I incorporated a tech lock so that I can lift this tab just like that, and then I can actually squeeze these two tabs on both sides, and I can put that on a belt. I, and you don't have to remove your belt or whatever have you. So I always keep tools. And I always keep um, first aid, ideally. And this, these bike bags are just a godsend. They're awesome. Um, they were supposed to come with a rain fly. And so uh, this, is, this is the company ROS or something like that. Um, just be noted that it says it comes with a rain fly, but they warn you that it doesn't. Um, and they warn you, just contact them if it doesn't. Mine didn't have a rain fly, and it was very difficult to contact them. So you might get a rain fly, you might not get a rain fly. I left negative. Um, I left a kind of a well-rounded review, but I, I was kind of, you know, cheesed off that they didn't include what, what they said they would. Um, that was kind of upsetting. And then, so th that takes me to, um, 
my 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 um chain and that takes me to um the chain lube that i'm using so typically what people rock is generally speaking some kind of uh chain oil okay or a and those are separated into categories a dry lube and a wet lube a wet lubes for if you're riding in a wet season okay it'll hold up to rainwater and such well okay and the dry lube for for dry riding conditions okay what i did with this okay is i synthesized my own uh, chain wax recipe some guys use chain waxes they're a um a, a petroleum based chain wax such as uh paraffin and they'll use paraffin oil and they'll they'll dilute it to where it softens up and then they can choose their chain wax blend accordingly that you you know you have to blend it so um I feel like chain waxing is one of the best ways to do it because this is not a sealed chain like that of um, most motorcycles. It doesn't have O-ring seals. So you're gonna get dirt on this chain and it's gonna find its way in, especially if you have a more fluid type of oil. Oil attracts dirt, so does grease. I used to use grease and, pardon me, the one thing that I didn't like about grease was although it has high wearing characteristics grease has a hard time of getting inside the roller that spins okay one of those rollers okay it has a hard time getting into the roller you can pack grease on the chain but that doesn't mean it makes its way in the secondary thing that i don't like about greases okay is is that thick axle grease attracts a lot of dirt okay more so than say oil necessarily um and it, it doesn't shed off as easily as oil does, but you still have that problem. So I opted for chain wax, and this is a chain wax I blended myself, and it's actually an all-natural um, chain wax. Um, it uses, I, I used um, beeswax, I used um, um, pine tar, and I used softening agents like ballistol um, and turpentine to soften up th the formula. And I had to work for hours and just kept testing the, the, um, the using the scratch test and stuff and the smear test to t test what my viscosity was and find what I wanted to desire. You also have to assume, um, you also want to pay close attention to working temperature. So, um, for example, out here, it's like a hundred degrees. You have to take that into consideration. What temperatures are you going to be riding at? Because that will uh, affect the velocity or um viscosity pardon me viscosity of the working material okay so i utilized a uh, a homemade uh i'm joking but proprietary blend and so this chain wax has been holding up fantastically i actually reinforced it with graphite okay and so what the graphite does is graphite itself has a hard time sticking to metals okay if you dust a lock with graphite it can work its way in but it's not as good as um a graphite that has been reinforced with a polymer agent okay or that of beeswax which is kind of like an ester based uh wax that's kind of how it's uh you know chemically how it holds up so when you suspend the graphite in a matrix of basically polymer, okay, what happens is is it, it, it gets agitated and it stays in that suspended state. And I dip the chain and I dip it a couple times and then there – you, you see the benefit, okay, is like a motorcycle chain with – when it doesn't have O-rings, grit can work its way into the rollers. With this, okay, with this specific chain wax that, that I made, okay, the, the chain wax, when it's in its crock pot or heating station, okay, when it goes for its dip, okay, there's that, that time frame where it's hot and then it cools off and it impregnates the rollers with this – wax and this wax leaves a graphite blend so you get these really smooth writing characteristics but what you get is a, a chain wax that doesn't want to accept dirt okay the graphite helps too with with the um making it to where the chain wax doesn't want to attract dirt and debris and stuff it, it it kind of hardens it up and makes it less sticky so it doesn't want to accept the dirt and grit and if it does get dirt on it it'll want to shed it okay and that's what you see right here 
along the chain, you see a little bit of shedding. And interestingly enough, it came from factory with this, you know, clear tape, almost invisible sticker right here. And it makes it just such an ease to wipe off. Um, it's kind of a glossy area. Okay, it might be hard to see, but it makes it to where the, um, the, 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 all the shedding of the grease or wax in this case, it makes it to where it can easily wipe off. So once again, the benefit of the chain wax and the reason I use the chain wax that I do is because it doesn't want to accept dirt and it will not wash off. Rain will not wash it off. So you've got it impervious to the elements like rain. You also have it not wanting to accept dirt and debris. Okay. So that's that's kind of where i'm at with this um i've been more than happy with the blend that i've used um and with that said i think that wraps it pretty close up i'm not going to go too much into the gear set and the gearing ratios um it it has adequate gearing to get me through anything i want it's got carbon fiber front forks which help dampen the ride and make for a smoother ride um i've been happy with the bike and i think that if you look into this bike um, and you have a little bit of money on hand and you've been looking into getting a road bike, I would give this five stars. I think it's a fantastic bike. You can tell with the, the, all the, all anything that needs, uh, you know, fine, fine touches and machinery. You can tell special attention has been given to this bike and I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass it up without at least looking at it. So that's, that's my take on it. This is cap and knife. I thank uh, you guys for watching hit like, and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.